Special presentation of the Simulation Football League. And the handoff goes to Johnny English, who breaks out of it. Still going, Johnny English! And English will score! Touchdown, Renegades! He caught it between two defenders! OKC is taking the lead! Matsumoto back to throw, he's in trouble again! This is insanity from Jordan Gray! Look at Gunner! 20, 10, it's a runaway! Touchdown, Gunner! It's Hicho! Oh, he made three people miss! Hicho breaks a tackle! He's done it again! And off to Snowden up the middle, now tries to cut it right. Beautiful move by Snowden! He's in the open field! Midfield! 40! 30! 20! Richard Snowden to the house! Touchdown for Dragons! Back to pass. Looking for the football! And it is recovered by Orlando at the 17! Formation and off to Overstreet, around the right-hand side, Overstreet picks up a lot, and there he goes! Overstreet! Touchdown! Welcome to Buffalo, New York. It's a beautiful night. And it's time to end week six right. A matchup between two owners with more wins than any other team all time. The three and two Orlando Intimidators coming off of a two point loss to Louisville on a fake Extra point, trying to get a two-point conversion. Taking on the Queen City Corsairs, who have had some trouble with their own. The defending champs have lost four straight. And are trying to snap that skin at night. The boys in green against the boys in gold. Orlando, Queen City next. Happy to have you here, and glad you got the memo about the early start time. Uh, let's take a bet on who will be the first person to show up at 7 o'clock and uh, not know that the game started at 6. Orlando's got the ball on the key. On the tee, kick it. <laughs> We're underway. One word ahead of myself as Greg Caswell returns the kickoff past the 25 and the, to the uh, 30. And... Uh, <laughs> Jumping the gun on the favorite catchphrase. Don't often mess that one up. First and 10 at the 30. Daniel Garcia is the Queen City quarterback. 
And Garcia is, uh, he's had his struggles. He's fifth in total offense uh, per game, sixth in passing per game, just a tick over 300 yards. Four receivers trips off to the right, and Garcia will drop the throw. Garcia fires it out to T.E. Haynes, the third. And Haynes, the third, is going to have a first down up to the 41-yard line. Queen City's issues have stemmed on the offensive end. They have not uh, been able to get T.E. Haynes, the third, involved like they wanted to. The number one uh, pick in the draft. Uh, certainly has not had as big of an impact as the team would have hoped. He's been a, a big impact in the passing game. Uh, just haven't been able to find him the carries. We'll see if they do tonight. Four down linemen for Orlando Garcia to throw again. And Garcia fires it outside left. That pass is caught by Alexander Sheatovich, number 87. Of course, he's most known for that game-winning uh, catch on a bomb from Garcia with less than 30 seconds to go in the ball game in that opening night victory for Queen City. It's now been a month since they last tasted victory. Trips off to the left side. Garcia will hit Haynes, and Haynes will try to get outside. He will pick up a few, third down and two. Orlando and Queen City meeting for the first time in three seasons. They've been cross-conference uh, all of the three seasons since uh, the league went to a conference system. Queen City in the white helmets. Bright green jerseys and pants. White numbers, black trim. Orlando, white helmets. Gold jerseys, black pants. White numbers, blue and white trim. 9.42 to go in the first quarter. Garcia to throw. And Garcia's pass is caught for the first down at the Orlando 43. And that is Myers who gets some help up from his teammates. First down into Orlando territory and a nice start for the Corsair offense. Trips off left, Garcia to pass again. No runs on this opening drive, that pass is incomplete. First time we've seen Daniel Garcia shaken, it'll be second down and 10 from the 43. Corsairs have sort of uh, done a complete, not a complete 180. Of course, when they got Daniel Garcia, they became a much more pass-heavy team like they did or like they were back in season one when they won the championship over Oklahoma City. Trips off left and six on the line of scrimmage for Orlando. Back to pass. Garcia will fire short. It's dropped a little bit out uh, far ahead from Greg Caswell, but he arguably should have had that ball. Third down and 10 coming up at the 43. Third and 10. 9.03 to go in the first quarter. Back-to-back -back incompletions for the Corsairs. Have yet to see Orlando's offense take the field. Garcia changing the play at the line. Back to pass. And Garcia will flip it short. Pass is caught. Could have been picked off. But it's going to be short of the first down. Jake Legacy picks up five. The Orlando 37. And the Corsairs will punt it away. Shout out to all of the all of you who are with us here on uh, Thursday Night Football tonight. AJ Pick 6, Alan JD for Life, Crazy H2000, DHNYC, Doc Zulu, Drew T513, Lord Raider 77, Lou Thorne 16, NY Kia 31, Ramos Lynn sitting here, Flossin Sonic 002, Super Big Mac 23, TJ Cag SFL, True Shot Collar 1, Warrior 32, and X Factor 56. And that punt is a good one. It bounces out of bounds at the Orlando 7. Nice job there by the Corsair special teams, and that's where Orlando will take over. Orlando's offense is driven by Connor Pyatt. He is just 14th in the league in pass efficiency, uh, averaging 71.6 QBR. Zach Parker's up to ninth or 10th record in rushing yards per game. Parker will take the carry around the right side. Parker with a stiff arm past the 15 to the 16. A nine yard pickup for Zach Parker. And a strong start to Orlando's rushing attack.
second and one. Nine ten to go in the first, no score. And the handoff goes to Parker, and Parker will be stopped short of the first down. Nice defensive stand there, DJ McCoo and company uh, in the coverage. And let's take a look at that Queen City starting defense. DJ McCoo, number 55, and uh, Aquantish Shine, number 58. The cornerbacks, number 21, Freeman Peltier, and number 24, Eric Arrington. Play at the pass on third down. He's in trouble, and he goes down. Back at the 12, an injured Corsair on the play. That is defensive end Jeff Lane. And we hope he's okay. Jesus Salvador, number 12, is the strong safety, and the free safety, number 42, Greg Morrison. That was the man to make the sack, and he may have gotten dinged up when uh, Connor Pyatt rolled back over on top of him, but it's going to be fourth down, and both offenses come up cold. In their first go of things. DJ McCoo is number two in the league. He averages 10.6 tackles per game. And already active on that first possession of Queen City's winning the early field position battle. Fair catch called for at the 48 by Caswell. And Queen City will start on Orlando's side of the field. Simulation Football League is presented by Dak Stats and OBS Studios. Celebrating our seventh season on Twitch.tv. Elsewhere around the SFL, quiet night for the SFL tonight. Tallahassee's at NYC on SFL N2. The Sailors will try to keep pace with the Dragons and the Crabs in the North Division. Pass outside is caught by Sheatovich. Pickup of nine to the 39. Second and one coming for Queen City. Tallahassee is also two and three, and they have a much tougher uh division as uh, Orlando is ahead of them at three and two of course obviously playing right now and then Santa Fe is five and one Houston is right behind Tallahassee at two and four trips off to the left Garcia back to pass and Garcia fires down the middle caught to the 31 yard line Garcia is seven of nine for 50 yards but even though Queen City says that they uh, are not happy with the lack of runs for from T.E. Haynes, we have not seen a change here in the first quarter. Two receivers off to the right side. Garcia going to change the play. T.E. Haynes is in the backfield. Garcia will throw. Garcia down the field. Eight for ten. It's a Queen City touchdown. Jake Legacy doing it once more for the Corsairs. And it's Queen City 6 and Orlando nothing here early on. Garcia on the money to Legacy and he beats A.J. Lacoste who leads the league in interceptions but he wasn't anywhere close to picking that pass off. And Jake Legacy does it one more time. Jake Legacy is actually top 10 in the league in receptions per game. He averages 7.4 yards a catch, and he is just Mr. All Reliable for the Corsairs. Extra point is up and through. And with 6.37 to go in the first quarter, it's Orlando nothing in Queen City 7 as the defending champs try to get, uh, try to right the ship tonight. Orlando on the return from the six yard line. Clark past the 25, past the 30. Clark, 35. Clark up to the 44. What a beautiful return there by Orlando. Zach Clark making things happen for the Intimidators, and that gives Orlando a great starting field position. 
Connor Pyatt sacked on that last drive. Orlando has had so many troubles. Um, he has been sacked a league high 19 times coming into the night. Now 20 sacks given up in six games. Pyatt certainly has taken a beating. Three receivers, two in the backfield. 4-2 defense out of Queen City. Back to pass. And Pyatt down the middle. Popped up into the air and sli sliding to make the interception. It was like uh, there was a wet spot on the field. Uh, rain did come through here a little while ago, but look at Salvador here. He's going to pop it up off his foot and then Freeman Peltier and it looked like a Qantas shine. Peltier actually may have hit that with his backhand. That was actually Salvador and Maku. Wrong on both accounts. Uh, but could not come up with a play. Wild play there as Queen City nearly forces the turnover. And off to Pyatt on a draw. And Pyatt will actually push ahead. Nice game for Connor Pyatt, a pickup of five. A third and five at the 49 coming up. Make sure to follow the league on Twitter at SimulationFL. Subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels at slash SimulationFL. And our website, daily updates, SimulationFL.com. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. Queen City's already on the board. Third down, Orlando. Pyatt the pass, and Pyatt is sacked again! Back-to-back -back drives. Pyatt has been sacked on third down. And Ron Cedar is going all Hulk on Orlando. Blast through the interior of the line. And Orlando will have to punt it away again, and Queen City's defense is looking... Sharp here at home. Orlando is no joke. Uh, topped, uh, almost topped Louisville, I should say. And we're 3-1 before that. Louisville is no easy team to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. From the 19-yard line, Casper will turn up to the 22. And that's where Daniel Garcia will start with Queen City's third possession with 5.15 to go in the first. Kafaresi, welcome to the chat room. Uh, did you happen to see our tweet? I'm wondering if that brought you in. Happy to have you along. You can join as a player, and then uh, your destiny uh, goes however far you want to take it. T.E. Haynes uh, takes the pass outside, picks up two. Five minutes to go in the first. So Queen City up early with the touchdown pass to Jake Legacy. A couple of sacks on Connor Pyatt. Three receivers, Garcia back to pass. And the pass caught by Haynes, going to break a tackle out to the 28. And uh, T.E. Haynes already with four grabs for 19 yards. Four seventeen to go in the first quarter. Orlando down a touchdown, looking for a defensive stop. Garcia steps up in the pocket, fires down the field, tipped away. Nice job by uh, Jasper Lennox on the outside to make the stop. And Queen City, um, quite frankly, is is uh, running less than usual, and they'll have to punt it away. But their defense has done a tremendous job thus far tonight. Four oh eight to go in the first quarter. And Orlando from the thirty three will get up to the thirty five yard line. That's Zach Clark on the return. Oh, 
So 4.03 to go in the first. Orlando 3-2. and two. Queen City is 1-4. and four. But you take a look at the all-time franchise records. And uh, these are the two most winning teams in SFO history. Servo is 37-27. and 27. Uh, Queen City owner 35-30. and 30. That is their Slack uh, usernames, in case you're wondering how they're classified. But 65 games under the belt of the Queen City Corsairs and 64 games under the belt of the Orlando Intimidators. The two have four championships between them of the six completed seasons. These teams certainly know how to win ball games around here. Zach Parker takes the handoff, bounces off the tackle. Parker's in the open field, down to the 43. 4.4 yards a carry for Zach Parker, and he's off to a strong start. Tackle made by Greg Morrison. Greg Morrison is number four in the league in tackles per game, 9.8. Qantas Shine is third. If you're keeping track at home, Queen City has three of the top four tacklers in the SFL. Back to pass, Connor Pyatt swings it outside, caught by Lorenzo Allen. And that gives us a chance to introduce the Orlando offense. Quarterback is Connor Pyatt, 6'2", 225. Zach Parker's the running back. He wears number 35, 6'1", 217. Wide receivers, number 44, Lorenzo Allen. Number 16, Nathan Chambers. The tight end, number 36, Mr. Clutch, Isaac Perez. Two fifty to go in the first. Seven nothing. Queen City on top of Orlando. Back to pass, and Pyatt will check it down just before uh, the pressure got in his face. Pass caught for a five-yard gain to the Queen City forty-seven. Doty on the reception. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Second and five. Forty-six yards. Three receivers, two off to the to the uh, right side, bottom of the screen, far farthest from the football on the left hash. And the handoff goes to Parker, and Parker's going to get away from one, pushing ahead, looking for the first down. He's going to be marked short. Third down and one, but uh, a nice quick juke move right back into the inside for Zach Parker, and that allowed him to get positive yardage on that play because Queen City had it pretty well defensed. Now third down has been an enemy so far tonight for Connor Pyatt. He's been sacked on the last two possessions on Orlando third down uh, attempts. Third down and one, and this is a smart thing to do. Give it up to Parker, but Queen City blows him up in the backfield. Ron Cedar with a tackle. He's already got a sack, and Queen City knew it was coming all the way. Another defensive stand by the Corsairs, and Orlando will have to punt it away, and this has been a tremendous defensive quarter for Queen City, and even if their offense has not figured things out, just yet um, with, the, with the run game they at least have been able to rely on their defense this punt will go to the 11 Ray Caswell on the return up to the 12 and not much room uh, to scamper away from the Orlando defense 109 to go in the first quarter and Queen City's got the ball back deep in their own territory T.E. Haynes in the backfield, four receivers, trips off to the left side for Queen City. We've seen them uh, a lot in this formation here tonight. Back to pass Garcia, and Garcia will flip it out. Haynes is wide open, but Haynes now doesn't have a lot of room on the outside. Pickup of just five yards. Rodney Woods was out there closing. And let's meet Queen City's offense. Daniel Garcia is the quarterback, 6'4", 234. Running back, number one pick of the rookie draft, T.E. Haynes the third, six foot two fifteen. Wide receivers, number 82, Jake Legacy, number 80, Greg Caswell, number 11, J.J. Howard. Garcia to throw again, and Garcia's pass is caught. First down at the 30, and stops the clock with 33 seconds to go. That's Alexander Shayatovich again, who has been very active so far tonight.
And now we're going to get a challenge flag from Kyle Walsh. He wants to see this again. Are challenging whether the pass was caught in bounds. Pass to the outside. Looks clean from Shayatovich. Let's get the call. After review, the pass has been ruled incomplete. The catch was made out of bounds. Well, they said he was out of bounds. Orlando wins the challenge. Tough break there for Shayatovich and the Corsairs. It'll pick, uh, bring up third down and five. Third down and five of the 18. Again, trips off to the left side. Queen City appears to uh, be stuck in the formation. Garcia to pass down the middle. That works. First down of the 25. That's Greg Caswell. And the Corsairs have another first down. Queen City has played one of their best quarters in, uh, in the last few weeks. Looks sharp. 99 yards and a touchdown. No picks from Garcia. And he's kept the ball away from A.J. Lacoste, the league leader in interceptions, and that is always important when you're playing Orlando. Garcia back to pass. He'll uh, flip it outside. Pass is caught uh, by Shea Tobich. A pick up a five, and actually there is five seconds left in the first quarter. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Your score at the end of one, Orlando nothing, Queen City seven. The SFL Network's presentation of Thursday Night Football rolls on in a moment. Start of the second quarter, Garcia out to T.E. Haynes, and he's going to lose yardage. Third down and six coming up for the Corsairs. I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Week six coming to a close, the halfway point of the SFL's regular season. Hard to believe it's come and gone that quickly already. Back to pass Garcia. Garcia's in a bit of trouble. Looked like there may have been a hold on the outside. Haynes is going nowhere. He's got seven catches, but uh, not doing much on the uh, in the receiving game. Just 23 yards receiving for Haynes, and Queen City going to have to punt it away. And if Orlando's offense could figure out the Corsair defense, they may be in business here as Queen City is still yet to run in this game. And the conundrum of Queen City's lack of runs continues tonight. From the 37-yard line, Clark on the return to the 43. And once again, good starting field position. Second time Orlando started outside their own 40-yard line. Queen City 13th in the league in rushing offense per game, 74 yards. A ball game. They're actually 15th in run defense. They give up 142.4. But Zach Parker's been fairly contained so far tonight. But the Parker, this time right side, breaks two tackles, and he's gone. Just as I said it, I may have jinxed the guys in green, and Zach Parker's got an Orlando touchdown. That is something that Orlando has been sort of missing uh, this season. The explosivity that we know Zach Parker can bring. And he is just putting Orlando on his back on that play. Shaking off two defenders and Orlando is an extra point away from tying the ball game.
So 9.39 to go in the second quarter. And the extra point for the Intimidators is good. So no need to be sacked on that drive for Orlando. Just hand the ball off to Parker and he'll do the rest. Queen City over pursuing on the outside on that 15th rank run defense. Uh, showing up in an ugly time for the Corsairs tie ball game. We got a busy week coming up this week. Of course, uh, Sunday night, not only is uh, the first full slate of NFL, but we kick off week seven We're back in the conference play as things get incredibly uh, serious. Carolina is taking on Baltimore, uh, flexed in to the Sunday night matchup. We've also got Santa Fe, who just uh, promoted Colin Douglas to head coach. Congrats to Colin Douglas on that promotion. Uh, they're taking on Oklahoma City. No small feat uh, to take on that top-ranked Renegades defense on Sunday. Cleveland and D.C. also in action. Back to pass. Garcia down the middle, incomplete. Pass intended for Legacy, second and ten, and the Queen City offense has gone stale. Then Tuesday night is the SFL State of the League address, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. And then Wednesday and Thursday night, we're back in the saddle to finish off a terrific Week 7, uh, highlighted by the game of the week for Week 7 on Wednesday night. It's a battle for first place in the East Division as the 5-1 and one Dallas Roughnecks take on the 6-0 and oh Louisville Wolfpack. It's must-see television, and it is Wednesday night here on the SFL Network. Garcia down the middle. The pass is caught for the first down. Greg Caswell the Corsair 43 three receptions on five targets for Caswell and another move of the chains for the Corsairs and that came at a really important time after uh, Orlando found their offense on their previous drive Nine twenty and counting here in the second quarter and back to pass Garcia out to the outside. Pickup of seven. Second and seven at the 46. Nine minutes to play in the first half. Tie ball game between the two most winning franchises in SFL history. Garcia with trips off to the right. Will hit Haynes. And Haynes pass midfield as a first down to the 46. And while Queen City has not gotten the run game going tonight, Daniel Garcia has uh, made a lot of nice decisions down the field. And Haynes doing work on the outside. Eight oh six to go in the first half. Trips off to the left side for Queen City. And Garcia hits Haynes again. Past the 45, breaks the tackle. Past the 40. Second and four at the 40. For Haynes, a pickup of six in the rest of the course. Their offense, and they are milking the clock, actually, with this effective passing attack. Now a different look. Three receivers, two off to the right side. Haynes in the backfield. Second and fourth, the Orlando 40. Tie ball game at seven. And T.E. Haynes will take the handoff. His first of the game. He'll break a tackle and get a first down to the 34-yard line. Jasper Lennox with his third tackle. But this is the best drive of the game for Queen City's offense as they are exhausting Orlando's defense. Orlando second in the league against the run. And the defense all around pretty good. Garcia back to throw. He'll hit Haynes again. Haynes passed the 35 and nearly got to the 30. Pick up a three. Orlando's defense fourth in scoring. Second against the pass and second against the run. 
first in total defense coming into the night, 296.4. Just an impressive start of the season for the Intimidator defense, but Queen City is on the move. And off on a counter, T.E. Haynes got to the 30, pick up of just one. 6.16 to go in the first half, and a big third down and six coming up here for the Corsairs. Garcia's out of the gun on third down. Press coverage, back to pass. Garcia hit as he threw. Stewart on the pressure, and that'll force the field goal unit to come out. And a solid uh, end to the drive for Orlando after it looked like Queen City was just going to breeze down the field and get in the end zone once again. So the Corsairs... Will line up for a 46-yard field goal attempt, about 71 degrees. As mentioned, uh, some showers blew in just before kickoff here in Buffalo, but moved off to the east. And that's where the winds are blowing. 46-yard attempt for Queen City off a high snap, nearly blocked. The kick is good. Right down the middle, and Queen City takes a 10-7 lead. Good hold, laces out from the backup quarterback, and this is a perfect kick for the Corsairs, and they are back out in front as that ball just scratches the net in the back of the end zone. Don't forget our next game, again at the early time, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. It's the 3-3 three three Baltimore Crabs and the 2-4 and four Carolina Skyhawks as conference play ramps back up. That is a battle for... Uh, some playoff spots if I've ever known one here in week seven. Skyhawks and Crabs have done a lot of talking. Hopefully they understand that everyone is, fr uh, everyone is, uh, is friends in the end. <laughs> it's, it's, gotten, uh, it's gotten a bit heated between those two ball clubs, but uh, hopefully we don't see anything escalate as the Skyhawks and Crabs both uh, badly want that victory next week in Raleigh. Oh, there we go. Uh, Dr. Sim is the first person. I, I knew we'd get. I knew we'd get at least one. I thought it was going to be Spec Two, quite honestly. And the, the carry goes to Parker. There is a flag on the play, and we'll check that. That's going to come. That's going to be on Orlando. That's coming back. That'll be first and twelve. That was a. Holding down the field on Nathan Chambers, a clipping rather, on Nathan Chambers. And uh, that's a rough penalty, wipes away a strong run from Zach Parker. First and 12 at the Orlando 30, out of the eye for Orlando, down 10 7 the Corsairs. Fake the pullback, and Zach Parker got away from the initial pressure. Picks up four to bring up a second down and eight. 2K Sports Halftime Report is coming up next with first half stats and highlights. And don't forget to uh, uh, to check out the postgame show. Sorry, PX1 Sports was a bit distracting in the chat. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? And off to uh, Parker, and Parker's going to go around the left side, and Parker's in the open field and picked up a key block late. One man to beat, 25-20. He will not be caught for a score. The second major Zach Parker carry for a touchdown in the first half, and Orlando is back up front by three. I believe this was Allen on this crucial block. Watch Allen right there. Pick up that block, and that's uh, spring Zach Parker for a score. And that was a big play here towards the end of the first half for Orlando. Number five, 
Zach Parker averaging 108.2 yards per game this season. In his first three games, he had no touchdowns. He's had uh, five in the last three weeks, counting tonight. And the extra point for Orlando is up and good. Orlando 14, Queen City 10, 437 to go in the first half. So Orlando will kick it away. Caswell back deep from his nine yard line on the return Up to the 28. Sailors and Pride on SFL N2 tonight. And the full slate starts all over again on Sunday here in week seven. Three receivers all off to the right side for the Corsairs. And Garcia will drop the throw. Garcia fires down the field, passes caught uh, to the 31 yard line, a pickup of three. Shayatovich on the reception. Shayatovich at least has to have. A handful of grabs here in this first half. Let's go! Second and six. Ball at the 32 yard line. Trips off to the right side for Queen City. One receiver far side. Haynes in the backfield and Garcia changing the play. Back to pass. Garcia swings it outside. Pass caught. Legacy pick up a four. Third down and three at the 35. If you're just joining us, Zach Parker with two touchdown runs. Um, long gains, particularly on the last drive. Queen City threw a touchdown to all reliable Jake Legacy, tacked on a 46-yard field goal, and that's where we stand. 3.50 to go in the first half. Trips off left side for Garcia. Back to pass, and Garcia will fire it deep down the field. Pass is caught by Sheatovich. First down to the Queen City 47. Alexander Sheatovich is doing some work in the first half. Simple deep out here from the tight end, and he has plenty of room on the sideline to make things happen and does a nice job of tapping both feet. Orlando's already, I don't think Orlando's going to win this challenge. They won one earlier tonight, did Kyle Walsh, and I don't think he's going to win this one because Sheatovich does an excellent job. Uh, tapping both feet. Check this out. Unless my eyes deceive me. Sheatovich, watch here. Boom, boom. Oh, he sort of clicked the heels. That was closer than I initially thought it was. After review, the play stands. The but uh, I was right the first time. Eric Barkley and the Corsairs will move the chains for the first down. And... Orlando is charged with a timeout. That's their first of the half. They have two remaining. Queen City has all three. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I think that I think that the camera angle there was a bit deceptive. It certainly looked like he tapped both feet before he got out of bounds, although as, uh, trips to the right on the counter to T. E. Haynes. He bounces off of one and then another. And T.E. Haynes has a first down. Haynes putting in work in the second quarter. And it's another move of the chains for Queen City. Eventually, Robert Woods and company able to bring him down. 3.20 to go in the first half. Corsairs trying to fight back on top. The receivers hand off Haynes again. Haynes straight up the middle. Breaks off a tackle. Picks up four. 3.03 to go in the first half. And Queen City again. They have really controlled the clock in this game. Orlando's two scores have come on big runs. And they really have not put a solid drive together in this first half. 
Hey, Robert, happy to have you here. The receiver's off right side for Garcia. Everyone goes right, and so does Queen City's target. Garcia with a quarterback rating of 100.8. That's J.J. Howland's first catch of the night. First down, Queen City at the Orlando 29. Another solid drive here for the Corsairs, but their last long drive ended in a field goal. Can Orlando's defense do the same here? 4-3 look. 2-10 to go in the first half. Back to pass, Garcia, and he fires down the field. First down inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. That is Greg Caswell. And we hit the two-minute warning on a positive note for the gang in green. Queen City into the red zone. And that's the two-minute warning. This is the SFL Network. minutes to go in the first half. First and 10 at the 14. Three receivers off left side now for Garcia. And Garcia's pass is dropped on the outside. Pass intended for Ellard. We've seen Queen City probably in a, in a trip set um, maybe 80%, 75 to 80% of this game, I would venture to say, Queen City has been in a trip set. Um, it's been interesting watching them operate, but it's been fairly effective. Three receivers now, and Garcia goes out of the shotgun. Haven't seen any runs out of Garcia tonight. Usually he's good for a handful of scrambles. Back to pass, a simple out route. Orlando's defense backs off, and that is a Jake Legacy siding. Five catches for 48 yards and a touchdown for Jake Legacy on the night. Another solid and productive evening. Legacy, 10th in the league in receptions per game, 7.4. Queen City's pass offense is fifth in the league, as is their pass defense. Trips off left, and Orlando's showing a blitz. They got a lot of guys in the line of scrimmage. They come with a four-man rush. Garcia's got to get away. Fires it outside short, and Haynes uh, does a, a nice job of staying in bounds, but uh, his reach out for the first down line falls short. And Orlando's defense comes up big again in the red zone. They get pressure there with a four-man front, and uh, the Corsairs are going to have to kick the field goal. Nobody home in the end zone. So two big plays have, or have Orlando out in front. The chip shot from 23 yards away is good for the Corsairs. And Queen City just can't manage to take the lead, even though they have to be absolutely dominating time of possession tonight. From the nine yard line, Orlando on the return. Clark. He had a good return in the earlier in the first half, but uh, stopped well short of the 30 there at the 27. If you haven't seen it already, the SFL's documentary, A New Frontier, is on simulationfl.com. Just click the A New Frontier banner to check it out today. Approaching 500 views with... Uh, little marketing and advertising, so we're proud about that. Zach Parker takes the handoff. He's been the tough man to contain tonight. Picks up four, and Orlando playing this two-minute offense close to the vest. DJ McCoo on the tackle. Let's go! Second and six. One twenty and counting. Two in the backfield with Pyatt. He has not been sacked in this second quarter. 
after taking two sacks in the first. Three receivers, back to pass. Hyatt outside to Allen, looking to turn the, actually that's Chambers, and instead of turning the corner, he greets the Queen City bench. No gain on the play. Nathan Chambers has been awfully quiet tonight for Orlando, as has the pass game overall, overall I should say. Lorenzo Allen is 26th in the league this year in receiving yards per game. That is low for him. Nathan Chambers is 36th in receptions per game. Hyatt down the field, knocked down. And a good defensive play there, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Nice job by Queen City in the flats. Honestly, you may call me crazy, but I kind of miss the defender out there. I know he's wearing the bright colors, but uh, just didn't see him as I was looking down the field. I thought Orlando had a man open, and uh, supposedly Pyatt did too. Kick is away, and the Corsairs will start to drive from the 34-yard line. We do have all three timeouts and 54 seconds to go, and Queen City's offense has moved the ball quite well. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. again off the left side for Garcia and Garcia will hit Haynes as the 35 past the 40 nice play no huddle here for the Corsairs trying to preserve some timeouts man they love this formation and I don't think they've hit the the outside man once all night um, as that pass is nearly intercepted that's Shayatovich on the far outside that's uh, being sort of ignored by Garcia for uh, catches on seven targets for uh, Greg Caswell in a busy first half. Third, and three Third down and three for Queen City. Down 14 to 13. Back to pass, Garcia going down the middle and it's a, call, a catch, first down. And I uh, believe Shayatovich to the Orlando 44. Again, Queen City electing not to use any of their timeouts. They have all three of them. Back to throw. Garcia, he knows what he's doing. Deep down the middle. The pass is caught inside the 20 and a timeout by the Corsair. Shayatovich again. Shayatovich is going to have a career high in catches in the first half if he's not careful. Uncovered down the field. A.J. Lacoste eventually comes up with the tackle. But he has easily been the go-to man of the first half for Daniel Garcia. Sheatovich, 25 catches coming into the game. And Queen City is just going to tack on a field goal. They're not going to take any chances. And they are just they just want the lead going into the half. Interesting uh, approach as they're not even with two timeouts left. They're not even going to attempt to move any forward. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. Typically, there's there's only one timeout left um, as A.J. Ship uh, boots it through and Queen City takes advantage. But, man, Queen City was in the red zone. I guess they just didn't want a chance of turnover. Um, and for, for Queen City on a four-game losing streak, maybe playing a little bit more conservatively will be uh, better for them as they've been an aggressive team down the field during this losing streak. Nevertheless... The Corsairs uh, take a two-point lead. 16-14, they've scored three straight field goals. Clock on the return up to the 30. There's seven seconds remaining. Sheatovich's career high in receptions is seven. It's happened twice. And uh, both of those games, Queen City had solid offensive production uh, overall. Cleveland... On opening night, seven catches, 124 yards, and three scores. And last week against the Maulers, seven catches for 102 yards and a touchdown. No other game, Sheatovich was over 100 yards receiving, but uh, 
This was uh, Zach Parker going to break off a tackle and then another. Zach Parker down the sideline and Parker is out of bounds with one second to go. 169 yards for Zach Parker in the first half. Yeah, Queen City definitely needs to address uh, their run defense if they are going to uh, get themselves back in the playoff picture. Quanta Shine breaks off a tackle and Eric Arrington just gets absolutely destroyed. And at the Orlando 45, Orlando may be able to attempt a Hail Mary pass. Here. Hail Mary here for Connor Pyatt. One second left to go in the first half, and Pyatt will drop the pass. It's the four-man rush. Pyatt airs it out deep. Pass is intercepted at the 10. Gets a block. Gets another on the return. Gets another 30-35. And all the way to the 39-yard line. I thought there for a second we were going to have a very long interception return for a touchdown. But that ends the first half. Vic Wiener on the interception. Ah, you see something new every night in the SFL. Your halftime score, Orlando 14 and Queen City 16. Your 2K Sports Halftime Report is coming up next. to get the ball to start the second half. Passing yards in the first half for Orlando, but down just two because Zach Parker had his best half of the season. Pyatt's pass to start the third quarter is caught. 
for a seven-yard pickup, and that's almost more than he had in the first half. 16 on the night. Garcia is trying to have a 500-yard performance, but, uh, man, that is just a funny stat as uh, Nathan Chambers finally gets involved in the action. Second down and three coming up for Orlando. Again, a matchup of the two most winning franchises in SFL history with Orlando a slightly better record, but Queen City's got the championships. Hyatt hands off to Parker, and Parker is locked down. A one-yard loss, Shine and McCoo on the stop. And that will be a key for Queen City here in the second half. If they can just keep Zach Parker contained, he has been the only offense for Orlando, and Queen City can uh, walk out of here at 2-4. and four. Back to pass, Pyatt. And Pyatt will fling it outside. What a beautiful play by Freeman Peltier. And it's fourth down. He swatted that one out of the air, and I don't. I didn't think that he was going to be anywhere near the football. But a great play by Freeman Peltier to force the punt. 5'11", 225. Peltier this season, 36 tackles, four for a loss. That's second most on the team. Has not had an interception though. As Orlando kicks it away and a strong start to the second half for Queen City and the ball will be fair caught by Caswell at the 35. So who is your number one team? Send your power rankings to at Lord Raider on Slack. And make sure to listen to Inside the SFL Saturday night and Sunday afternoon with Doug Bose, Alan Drum, and the rest of the Inside the SFL crew. No one talks more about the Simulation Football League uh, than the Inside the SFL crew. And they will be debuting their new power rankings on the show. No gain on that run from T.E. Haynes to start the third for Queen City, second and ten. Three receivers off to the left side and a 4-4 defensive look out of Orlando. Showing a blitz. Orlando will come with heat and the pass from Garcia is intercepted. Intercepted by the league's leading interception man, A.J. Lacoste. Does it again. That is his ninth interception in six games, folks. He holds the professional football record after he had five all by himself against Baltimore. And he forces the first turnover of the game here, or, uh, well, actually the Hail Mary at the end of the first half, but sometimes I like to not count those as the quarterback is just chucking it up with nothing to lose. Pyatt back to pass, and he's going deep down the field, and Pyatt's pass is caught. If it was a little bit more on target, Lorenzo Allen would have had a touchdown, and that is more passing yards than Orlando has totaled the entire game. A big pickup on a corner post route on Eric Arrington, and Allen slides in to make the catch. Nice execution there out of Pyatt, whose rating can only get better. And we mentioned earlier in the first half about don't test A.J. Lacoste and what did Daniel Garcia do and what was the result. Hyatt back to pass. He'll go middle of the field in between three Corsair defenders. Isaac Perez makes the catch. It's a first and ten at the Corsair 15-yard line. A tremendous answer from Orlando after that sluggish start on their opening drive. And off to Parker, and Parker will not get away, actually. Nice tackle made by Aquantis Shine. He stepped his game up. Again, Shine, Morrison, and McCoo are top five tacklers in the SFL. Aquantis Shine in his second season. 7.52 to go in the third. Third. 
Looks like a nickel out there for the Corsairs. Two in the backfield. Handoff goes to Parker, and Parker will not get away. McCoo on the tackle, and that has been Queen City's second half adjustment. Zach Parker has almost done zero on the ground here in the third quarter. Big play here for the Queen City defense. Third down and 10 at the 16. Four receivers, two to either side for Connor Pyatt. Pyatt back to pass against a four-man rush, and he's sacked for the third time in this game, all on third down. And jawing with Pyatt is John Setzer. And I don't think it was an argument or a discussion. It just looked a bit one-sided, as it did on that replay. Another big sack by the Corsair defense forces Orlando's uh, kick team out there for the first time tonight as the Intimidators will try to take the lead back. Parker not going much of anywhere so far in the third quarter and the 39-yard field goal for the Intimidators is no good! He missed it wide left! Hooked it all the way to Nate Fleming! This ball just keeps going and going and going until it falls outside the nets. Just pushed it all the way from the right hash mark to pass the left upright, and Queen City maintains the lead. Four three defense, and back to pass is. Uh, Garcia, the pass is caught, stomping on a dime and getting down the field is Shea Tovich again. He had 75 yards at the break, approaching his third 100-yard game of the season. And watch Shea Tovich on this route. That is perfectly executed. Wow, Shea Tovich, that is some presence of mind on where the sideline is. Tremendous. Shea Tovich having another big game. The, the last big game uh, that he had was in prime time and I was on the call. He loves the spotlight apparently. First and 10 at the Orlando 48 yard line and back to pass is Garcia. Garcia will fire it out to Haynes. Haynes, 45. Haynes churning the legs all the way to the 40. A pickup of seven, second down and three coming up for the Corsairs. Six minutes to go in the third. Second and two from the sailor, 41. I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Thursday night football here on the SFL Network, and we've got a good one as Queen City up two is driving. Garcia hit as he threw. That was a live football. Anyone had a chance at it. But it falls to the ground, and it'll bring up third down and three. Both teams getting some pressure on the quarterbacks tonight. Orlando not getting the sacks as Queen City is, but they certainly are putting the heat on Daniel Garcia. I believe that's Sheatovich again, spread all the way to the outside. We'll see if they try to connect with him on third down and short. Garcia to throw. And Garcia fires off his back foot. Bad throw. Tried to knock it through in traffic. And Stephen Lambert knocks it away. Too far for a field goal. And the Orlando defense gets a stop. SFL postgame show coming up immediately following the games. How's the other game going? Tallahassee and NYC on SFL N2. That's been a pretty entertaining ball game as well. Inside the 10, this is going to hop down to the one. Perfectly played. And a nice smile from the punter. Loving it. Pyatt is d back deep in his own territory. First and 10. Five to go from the one. Parker past the five, past the uh, six to the seven to the eight yard line. 
And it's second down and three, and that gives Orlando some breathing room. Second down and three coming at the eight. And Parker will take the handoff. And Parker gets past the five. He will not get past the line of scrimmage. Zach Parker does not have a double-digit gain in the third quarter. Four fifty to go in the fourth. Queen City is clinging to the two-point lead they had at halftime. Eight in the box for the Corsairs. And Parker will get the handoff again. And Parker is stood up right at the line. DJ McCoo there again. Along with a teammate. And Queen City's doing a lot of smiling here in this third quarter. Looking to pull the upset tonight as Orlando has to punt it away again. Fair catch called for. This punt blows off the way to the left side of the field. Caswell to run over there just to make the catch. But the Corsairs are going to have great field position at the Orlando 37-yard line. Three receivers for Daniel Garcia out of the gun. Garcia will pass. Garcia looking long, and Garcia's pass is intercepted. This time it's Rodney Woods. Third pick of the game for, uh, well, second actually, of the game for Daniel Garcia. Looking for, I believe, Legacy again down the field, who was the intended receiver on his last interception. And both of these defenses have clamped down here in the third quarter. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Garcia trusted in Legacy to make the play, and he just couldn't come up with it. Back to pass. Pyatt flips out Parker. Parker past the 10, 15. Parker shoved out of bounds by Morrison before he gets the first down. Second and two at the 18. Which team is going to blink first defensively here in the third? That's the big question right now. Out of the eye, fakes the fullback. Parker takes the handoff and fighting for the first down. He's short. McCoo and Shine again on the stop. And I'm telling you, this Queen City defense looks completely different here in the second half against Zach Parker. Third down and short. Can Parker pick it up? He'll take the handoff, and he got a great block on the outside. And then another one lays out a Queen City defender. 187 yards for Zach Parker. Nine yards a carry tonight. And who got this good block on the outside? Number 74 there on Jesus Salvador. Pulls out. That is just a well-designed play. Well-executed play by Orlando to move the chains. Let's go. Receivers back to pass, and Pyatt dumps it over the middle to Garrison, I believe, just a one-yard gain. Second and nine coming up at the 29. Second and nine. Queen City up 16-14 thanks to a chip shot miss field goal from Orlando. Two backs, two receivers. Pyatt to throw down the field. Wide open. 
Nathan Chambers, and that's the second wide open man deep down the field for Orlando in the third. After a sluggish passing first half, I mean, there is just nobody on Nathan Chambers from start to finish on that play. A blown coverage there. First and 10 at the 48. Out of the gun, fly hands to Parker, and Parker is slammed down in the grass around midfield. Uh, 21 yards on 121 carries, rather, on 188 yards. Parker looking for a 200 yard night. Zach Parker's season high on the ground, 208 last week against Louisville on 27 carries. Fyatt out of the gun, back to throw, and Fyatt will fire outside. Just gets there. Chambers, boy, lucky. That way there was not a flag. Chambers, honestly, probably should have fallen down. One twelve to go in the third. Hyatt steps up, goes down the field into traffic. Oh, I thought McCoo scooped that up off of the intended receiver instead. The ball hit the turf, and that's a fourth down for Orlando and the Intimidator, Intimidator drive that was looking awfully promising uh, is back to a punt. Another stand as we've had a scoreless third quarter. City comes after this one, can't get to it. From the 14-yard line, the Corsairs on the return. Been a close game all night. Queen City is trying to scratch and claw their way to their second victory and to snap an ugly four-game losing streak. That would put them just a game back of the division lead. Of course, NYC is trying to tie for the division lead tonight. They are hosting the Tallahassee Pride on SFLN2. Garcia back to pass, all kinds of time, wide open, the pass is caught, nearly a first down, Isaac Wallace on the tackle, that's Greg Caswell with the reception. Third quarter winding down. Neither team has been able to score. Orlando had the best opportunity but missed a chip shot field goal. And Garcia's back to pass. And hits Haynes, who's open 25 past the 29 to the 29 and a half yard line. And shoved out of bounds. First down, Corsairs. Can they hold on for one more quarter? And that may have been the final play of the third unless Queen City can hurry to the line and get another one off. They will not. A scoreless third quarter at Con Pro Field in Buffalo, New York. Queen City 16, Orlando 14. What will the fourth hold? We'll be back in a moment. First and ten for Queen City. Garcia down the field. Caught with some open room to run for the first down. Jake Legacy. Legacy, I thought maybe he was going to have enough space to turn the corner. But still a solid play. And Legacy's been a tough target in this second half as A.J. Lacoste has tightened up on him, but Queen City finds a way to get him the ball. 
And off to Haynes. And Haynes makes a couple miss. Haynes fighting forward for every inch. Picks up three. Lacoste and company on the tackle. Second down and seven coming up for the Corsairs at the Orlando 46. Three receivers. Garcia's out of the shotgun. Queen City on the move here. Trying to extend their lead. Garcia back the pass. Look at all the time he's got in the pass. Ball's incomplete. Caswell was targeted. Nick Nitro knocks it away. And five catches on ten targets for Caswell. Sheatovich clearly has been the best option tonight. Don't forget that our next game on the SFL's main network is Sunday, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. The 3-3 three three Baltimore Crabs will be in Raleigh to take on the 2-4 and four Carolina Skyhawks. A battle of land and sea, air and sea, rather. As a Garcia's pass is caught up the middle, but short of the first down. Haynes on the catch. Orlando with another stop. And it's fourth and two at the 41, and Queen City reluctantly is going to have to punt this ball away again. Queen City has not scored under 20, under, uh, 20 points except for one time this year. Back in week two, a 20-7 to loss. On the flip side, uh, the, the lowest amount of points they've given up is 20 in that 20-7 to loss. As this punt is going to hop down and the the player stopped short of the goal line to say that's that's Wiener again. I've never been so excited to say the word Wiener as he makes a tremendous play up to the four. And I can't wait for people to uh, capture that audio clip for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, Queen City's special teams has been terrific tonight. They've had a lot of great punts, uh, bounce inside the 10. Hand off to Parker, he's in trouble, and Parker goes down at the one. No safety, but Zach Parker has less than 20 yards rushing in this second half, and it's second and 13 at the one. Parker's got to be careful here. Hand off, and there's no way he was getting away. A Qantas shine with the safety for Queen City. This one wasn't even close. I mean, Parker stood no chance. The fullback goes upfield, and DJ McCoo and a Qantas shine, the very effective one two punch, gets the safety, a four point lead, and the ball back to Queen City's offense. Queen City's defense, a, a valiant effort uh, here in the second half. They really have adjusted well to what Orlando was bringing. They've held Zach Parker in check after a few real big runs in that first half. And Queen City now trying to put the finishing touches on this one with 8.44 to go. Back to pass for Garcia. And the pass to the sideline is caught by Sheatovich. Ruled a catch at the Corsair 49-yard line. Second down and in inches. Down to 8.34 to go in the ball game. Post-game show coming up. We want to hear from you, especially if we have not heard from you before. We want to get you on the SFL network as Garcia's pass. Oh, would have been caught by Caswell. But a vicious hit over the middle right on the football by Larry Tatum. Watch the drop back and cut. Actually, not. it was not Tatum. It was Steven Lambert on the play. Watch this hit on right on the ball. Puts his helmet right on the ball. A tremendous defensive play. Man, that is that is really incredible. Third 
could not have defended that pass any better. Third down and inches. Garcia's going to throw. And to the outside, Legacy makes sure he keeps his feet in bounds. Pass is caught for a first down. Legacy seven catches for 73 yards and a score. He had the early score in this game. Seven fifty-five to go in the fourth, and Garcia will drop the throw. Garcia steps up, going to float it all the way across the field, and Haynes makes something out of nothing and picks up five. Seven forty-seven left. Queen City trying to hold on here on Thursday night football from Con Pro Field in Buffalo, New York. The three and two Intimidators in danger of being upset tonight here by Queen City, who's trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Garcia back to pass, and Garcia in trouble. A wobbly pass caught over the middle at the 23. It looked like Garcia's pass may have been deflected or his arm was hit, but Greg Caswell makes the play. Let's take a look at it. And Garcia, I think his upper arm was hit by an Orlando defender applying pressure, but it didn't matter. There's a look at Shea Tovic. He's got a, a career high, 10 catches for 108 yards, but has not reached the end zone tonight. In fact, just one touchdown for Queen City tonight at Jake Legacy score. Back to pass Garcia, outside to Legacy, inside the 15, down to the 14. Seven minutes to go. Man, this really could be a turning point for Queen City. Second and inches. We know what this team can do. They're the three-time champions. This would be an epic win over a team that was just 3-1 and one a couple of weeks ago. Garcia's pass down the middle is caught at the goal line by Greg Caswell. Six forty to go, and Caswell is stepping up big on this drive. I just can't throw it better than that. Isaac Wallace draped all over Greg Caswell. There's just hardly anything there open. And Queen City makes it happen. Under center with Haynes in the backfield. First and goal. And nine in the box for Orlando. Everybody up on the line. Garcia will throw it. And Garcia to the back corner of the end zone. Jake Legacy turns around and makes the play. What a catch from Legacy. Boy, talk about a risky throw, but what a perfect catch from Jake Legacy. That was unbelievable. Pass was thrown so that the ball could not be knocked away by a defender. And what a play from Legacy, his second touchdown in the game, and Queen City has their largest lead of the night. A bobbled snap, but the extra point is good, and Orlando has some serious work to do with 6.19 left in the ball game, and Queen City may just well be on their way to 2-4. The course airs next week at NYC, then at home against DC. A couple of crucial weeks coming up for the course airs. From the 11 yard line, Clark on the return, and Clark will get to the 30. That game next week against the Sailors, who are in a battle right now, a close contest with Tallahassee, is huge for that North Conf or North Division round. Pyatt to throw, still plenty of time left in this game, and Parker had a lot of room to the outside, 
but he runs out of bounds for a loss of one. Garcia has turned tonight into a pretty good one. 367 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Connor Pyatt still under 100 yards passing in this game. Orlando would drop to 3-3. Three and three. Houston would be just a game back out of third place. Of course, Tallahassee is 2-3, and three, and they're trying uh, to make some noise in the south. Back to pass, Pyatt. He'll throw down the field and shaking off a defender to get to the 39-yard line. That is Isaac Perez, third down and one coming up for Orlando. Now the Intimidators next week have the Tallahassee Pride at home. That's a crucial game in the South Division as well. Hand off to Parker. Oh, they whiffed on a tackle. And Parker's got his biggest gain of the, of the uh, second half. First down to the Orlando 49-yard line. That was a brutal job. Who is this? Oh, great. Oh, no, I, I, we missed the initial tackle off the replay. I thought we were going to embarrass somebody Leo. just then. Don't forget, Wednesday night also will be the first play-by-play -play broadcast of new play-by-play -play commentator in the SFO, Andy Hamilton. He will be on the call for the Houston Hyenas versus Los Angeles Sharks game. A battle of two and four squads there. Happy to add Andy Hamilton to the staff. 445 to go in the ball game. Pyatt back to pass. And Pyatt swings it outside. Caught first down. Big pass from Pyatt to keep the drive alive. Nathan Chambers on the catch to the Queen City 40. And still four and a half minutes to go. Anything can happen. Just a two-score game. And Nathan Chambers just absolutely fooled the defender. Made him look silly on that one. Three receivers, two in the backfield, 439 to go in the fourth. Back to pass. Pyatt flips it outside to Garrison, and he gets out of bounds. That's wise. Picks up four. Four thirty-five to go in the fourth. Orlando down 11. Queen City has played their most complete football game of the season. Three receivers. Pyatt changing the play at the line. Back to pass. Pyatt is going to run away and overshot an intended receiver. Third and six. Mendez applying some pressure, but uh, poor overthrow there from Connor Pyatt, although I'm not sure a receiver was open. And Queen City hold. Orlando is in dangerous position of getting into field goal range, although they've already missed one from 39 yards away, but a field goal would make it a one-score game. Pyatt on third down, goes play action against a blitz, and that pass is caught to the 26-yard line by Chambers. Perfect execution by Orlando, and now they're in no huddle, 420 to go in the ball game. Drive stays alive for the Intimidators. Pyatt back to pass, Pyatt going down the middle, tipped away, and McCoo should have had an interception. Queen City, not a lot of picks on the year, just six. Their opponents have 11. Aquantas Shine has two. Morrison has two. And Eric Arrington has one. The team has one. DJ McCoo is yet to haul in a pick this year. Out of the shotgun for Pyatt. On second down and 10. Back to throw. Pressure from the outside. Pyatt first down to the 11. Connor Pyatt making things happen on this drive. 4.05 to go. Down 11. Four receivers. Pyatt to throw again. Steps up in the pocket. Pass. Intercepted in the end zone. A diving interception made by Jesus Salvador. Turning Orlando over. Salvador having a quiet season, but he makes a monster play here. 
a diving effort. Look at Salvador, reads the play, turns completely around to defend Nathan Chambers. And that should solidify Queen City's victory, although we do have three minutes and chains left. But what a pick by Jesus Salvador in the end zone. And Orlando's worst nightmare occurs. They come away with nothing. Garcia under center, still throwing, and swings it outside, nearly intercepted. Queen City is playing with fire. There's running your offense as normal, because it's been very effective um, for much of the night. And then there's playing with fire, and that is playing with fire. And Queen City get Haynes some carries here to try to milk the clock. Garcia going to throw again. And Garcia is going to hit Haynes, but he goes out of bounds. No gain on the play. It stops the clock again. It's third down, and only six seconds has run off the clock. And Queen City is leaving the door open for Orlando. Garcia on a third down and ten to keep the drive alive. And now he'll hand it off to T.E. Haynes. Where was that on first and second down? Steven Lambert on the stop. And just like that, Orlando's going to get the ball back. Wow. So they run it on the, or they pass it on the first two. And then they decide, well, that's really not working out. And on third down and ten, Queen City goes nowhere. Haynes actually loses two. And the Corsairs will punt it away. Boy, they made a mess of that potential game-ending drive. And Orlando's got another shot at it, or two. SFL post-game show coming up. Three minutes to go in the fourth. From the 45, Intimidators to the 48-yard line. Can they get any points out of this drive? And man, if you just think about it, if they would have gotten just a field goal on the last drive, this could be a game-tying drive right now for Orlando. Great. Tallahassee has defeated NYC, so the Pride will go to 3-3. Three and three. They will face the slumping Orlando Intimidators, who look to be 3-3 three and three at the moment. Next week... High at the pass, all kinds of time, gets away from pressure, pass incomplete, nobody was open. Perez, the intended receiver, shine on the coverage. Meanwhile, NYC will drop to two and four, and it would appear that NYC and Queen City will meet in a battle of two and fours. Lots of teams settling between two and four and four and two around the SFL. Of course, Louisville is the lone unbeaten at six and oh. Santa Fe, Dallas, and Sioux Falls are all 5-1. and one. Hyatt the pass. Outside Chambers, but he fell over. Only a three-yard gain. Third down and seven. Just past midfield. Hyatt to throw, and Hyatt down the middle. Caught first down. What a grab by Isaac Perez to the Queen City 37. And Hyatt to throw. Sidearm pass caught again at the 32. But Orlando taking a lot of time here. Three receivers, or three timeouts rather, two receivers for Pyatt. Back to throw. Pyatt down the middle. The pass is off the hands of the intended receiver and picked off again. Tim Jacoby. This is bad luck. Perez just gets hit from behind by, I believe, DJ McCoo. Ball falls off his hands, and Queen City's defense has been just as electric as their electric green uniforms. Here in the second half, it was 16-14 to 14 at the half, and they have outscored Orlando 9-0 in the second half. That pass nearly intercepted. Queen City is still throwing. Man, it is just the... the the biggest head-scratcher of the season. 
the Queen City Corsairs and their offensive choices. 2-10 to go. Queen City doing everything in their power to try to extend this game. Unbelievable. Three receivers. Five in the box, and now Haynes will get the carry, and Haynes will pick up one. But why run on the first play? It's third down and nine, and now we hit the two-minute warning. <laughs> oh, every night is different in the SFL. This is the SFL Network. Two minutes left. It's third down and nine. Orlando still has all three of their timeouts. Garcia going to try to get the first down. Outside, knocked away and incomplete. Well, if you're going to throw on third down, I understand why you would do it. Because then you're just one first down away from putting this game away. But if you're going to throw for it on third down, at least throw past the markers. And Queen City going to punt it again. And Alexander Sheatovich is at a quiet fourth quarter. And actually, an interesting point by Alan J.D. for life in the chat is Clark will return to the 45, 150 to go. There is not a single team in this league that's 4-2. and two. We got 1-6-0, 3-5-1, and then everyone else is bunched up at the bottom. At the end of tonight, we will have, let's see, Orlando, Minneapolis, Baltimore, Oklahoma City, and Tallahassee will all be 3-3. Three and three. Five different teams at 500 for the first half of the season. That pass is caught by Allen. And then following them at 2-4, and four, we'll have the D.C. Dragons, Carolina Skyhawks, NYC Sailors, Houston Hyenas, Los Angeles Sharks, and Queen City Corsairs. Six teams at two and four. So 11 of the teams in the SFL are either three and three or two and four. Wow. That's unbelievable. Second and four, the Corsair 49. I can't believe this game is still going as Queen City gets another sack and Orlando has to burn a timeout. Boy, this Corsair defense. John Setzer with another sack. His second of the night. Orlando just can't protect the quarterback. So clearly a top four in the SFL through six weeks. Crowd on their feet. They just want this game to be over. They want to put a win in the books and get their second win at home this season. Pyatt's out of the gun on third down and nine. Back to pass. Pyatt will check it down to Parker. No gain. Maybe one yard on the pickup. Fourth down. Orlando's down to one timeout. Don't forget the SFL postgame show is coming up next. And we want to hear from you. If you were in action tonight, give us a buzz. And let us know what you think of 11 different teams being either 2 and 4 and 3 and 3. And what you thought of your team's performances tonight. 140 to go. Pass on fourth down is short of the first down. It's not even close. And now finally Queen City can run out the clock. A pitiful offensive performance by Orlando. D.J. McCoo makes yet another tackle. And Queen City will put this one to rest. 25-14, the likely final. Wow, Queen City, this win has been a long time coming. And now NYC on the schedule. Orlando Burns, their final timeout. Back-to-back -back East uh, North Division games for the Corsairs 
And they have an opportunity. Four and four could be first place in the division. That is how close Queen City is to storming back from worst to first in the uh, north through the first eight weeks of the season. One twenty left of course the big showdown comes your way on Wednesday between Dallas and Louisville but Sunday we've got two of those 11 three and three and two and four teams Carolina hosting Baltimore as teams try to separate themselves just a bit more in the SFL standings Kneel down for Daniel Garcia, although Orlando may get the ball back with about four seconds left. Don't go anywhere. SFL postgame show coming up next. Down to 20 seconds to go. And the punt with 11 on the clock. And clock will return up to the 22 with four seconds remaining. Final play of this ball game, finally. As we've known for a long time, Queen City was going to get the win for probably about the last 15 minutes of actual action. Orlando will fall to 3-3 three and three and miss an opportunity to join the top five ranks in the SFL. Final play of this game is going to be a Pyatt throw down the middle, wide open. The tackle will be made, and that's the ball game. Your final score, Orlando 14, Queen City 25. And the SFL postgame show is coming up in 60, uh, 30 seconds, actually, here on the SFL Network. <laughs>